Let's see what I got from my birthday shopping trip at Tony's Train to Rugby. Roll the intros. Hello YouTubers and welcome back to Shelmsford Junction. I'm Peter. As the title suggests today, as you can see, it is my birthday today. Uh, happy 44th birthday to myself. Um, with the pennies that I have been given for my birthday, been out on a shopping trip to Tony's Trades of Rugby, bought a few bits for the railway, uh, got a loco, uh, got a DCC chip for that loco to obviously put it onto DCC, and I've got a item for the depot, and I've got the ballast, and some cable trunking, uh, buffer stops, bits and pieces like that. So I'm going to spin the camera around, get down to baseball level, show you what we've got, and then we'll take you through also the little couple of bits that I've been up to on the railway as well as a little mini update as well. So I'm going to spin the camera around and let's have a look, shall we? So the first item that I received as a present uh, from the missus and my daughter for my birthday is this beautiful class 158 from Batman. Uh, as you can see, it's a two car 158 DMU uh, in First Great Western Railways, Great Western Railways. First group livery, and the item code for this one is 371857 class 158, which is a two car DMU, and it's numbered 158766 in GWR green. First group, it was DCC ready loco. I have purchased the next 18 uh, decoder for it, and it's now fully DCC. And has been ran in. It's a lovely low coat, but there is one thing that I do not like about this low coat. Um, with all the modern tech that we have now with DCC, Batman should have sorted this one out. Um, but I will show you on the next update that I do um, following this video, hopefully probably after the weekends. Um, but there is one thing that really annoys me with this low coat, uh, especially for the price you pay for this one. Also, while I was at Statfault at the weekends, I picked up this lovely Class 50 from Dapol, and it's 5040 Leviathan. And if you want to know the product code for this one, it is 2D-002-002, Class 50 Leviathan in 5040, BR Large Loco Blue. This one was DCC fitted, so I didn't have to put a chip in it. Absolute lovely look loco, runs really well, and it goes rather well with the BR Mark ones that I have so far. So on to what I bought while I was out at Tony's Trains today. The first thing I bought is this Graham Farish. Seamcraft wash plant, which is item code 42-002. Uh, I will get it out in a minute and properly show you that one. I bought one of the Train Tech buffer stop lights to go at the end of the buffers. At long last, I can start getting some detailing done on the railway. I got the Ratio 258 concrete trunking kit also picked up the st-8 two pack of uh, buffer stops i've gone for these ones because i'm doing a bit of a great western theme and these uh buffer stops i did see back in the 80s um around the plymouth north road area um when i used to go for eye appointments uh at the, in, in the eye infirmary that was directly opposite the main line so I do recognise these and do remember these being on a railway in Plymouth. Also picked up the Woodland Scenics B1372 Fine Ballast in brown. Um, I've decided to go for brown because um, I got bored of seeing everybody's railways with grey ballast. So I thought I'd go with something different and I've gone for the fine because obviously... This is for N-Gage, and I'm hoping that will look fine with the uh, 
with the ballasting once I get it started. Hopefully I'll get that started this week or over the weekend. Uh, also I picked up a Backman 6 pin decoder. I don't know what the product code number is because I can't find what it is. It is 36-568A and it's a 6 pin decoder. Which goes with this little beauty here, which is Graham Farish 372-250 class 474 47436 in BR large logo blue. DCC ready, obviously with the chip, it's going to go straight over to DCC and will also be going straight onto the DC side of the railway. But that is the little haul that I got for my birthday and quite happy with what I've got. And it gives me things that I can actually do. But before I go, I'm going to quickly pause the camera, guys, show you the wash plant. I'm going to show you where I'm going to put it and see what you think. So out the box, this is the wash plant itself. Nice side view there. You can clearly see the brush rollers that would obviously spin around at a few revolutions per minute to wash the loco and show you the top side as well so obviously these would be the spray bars that would spray the water down towards the train uh, to help wash it off as well nice little kit but with the kit you get these little um metal bits and these are for gluing on the bottom so if you need to raise it up a little bit because uh, I remember on my old layout that the trains used to hit the top here. So I had to put these on to raise it up a bit um, so that the trains wouldn't clash on it. Um, I will find out later on whether I need to do that with this one. But obviously I've got them if, I need, if need be. But that's the wash plant. And give you a closer look at the buffer stops. Um, I will try carefully when I get some paints to paint that little bit white or red and they just basically slip on the end of the track at the back and uh, and I might even try and get um, like a simulated not, not coal but you know like kind of like a asphalt kind of black scatter ballast to go on there because I think that would look better if it was uh, a more darker colour than just a generic brown that's it comes in I also might even actually get some spray paint and spray these uh, a lighter brown because to really to me that seems a bit too dark um, for the, the railway but that's something that I can do when I start getting some paints in and start getting detailing work done etc and while we're here be rude not to let's get this one out of the box and have a decent look around it Quickly get it out of its shell casing. So in the box, as always, you get uh, the detailing parts. Engage, too fiddly for me, so they will be staying in the box in case I ever do decide to sell this one. But I'll probably I will never sell this one because this is a 47 in a livery that I've been looking at for getting. Even even on my old layout, when I had my double O gauge, I wanted a 47 in this uh, livery. Um, I think the 47s look really, really nice in the blue and yellow, full yellow ends with the large logo. Um, don't know what other people may think. Um, going around the loco, paint finish is absolutely fine. All the detailing parts are nicely depicted on the battery boxes, fuel tanks, all over the bogies. On the front, obviously, you've got the two aerials for the radios and for stuff like that. Has full working headlights, domino lights, and obviously the red lights for when it's going in reverse. But yeah, a nice little loco to go with the fleet. And this will also go well with the BR Mark 1s. And eventually, when I get them, uh, Mark 2s. And this will also go well with the Mark 3s that I've got as well. Um, so yeah, another nice loco to join the fleet. As you can see, the 47 is now running around, running around on DCC control. Just put the chip in, 
quite an easy operation. Um, bit of a pain to oil it, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, you have to move the bogies out to the sides and really get a fine needle oiling pen in there. And as you can see, the 158 is also on the rails and running. And as you can see, the cab lights are on permanently. That was the uh, little item I was on about that I didn't like about the class 158. Even on a DCC decent decoder, you cannot switch the cab lights off. Um, if you switch the cab lights off, you switch the whole interior lights off in the coaches as well. So, unfortunately, it's one of them. You have to poke it, poke up with it, or turn it off. But you can turn them off via switches on the other side of the loco. 47 is a little bit of a noisy run at the moment. Hopefully the oil might bed itself in and help it out. But at the moment it's running quite nicely. And so is the Class 158. Uh, with the Class 158, the chip in it, the acceleration is slow and the deceleration is slow which makes it more prototypical and there you can see a good glimpse of the uh, large logo Ooh. large logo class 50 that I've, I've got at the uh, Southport Barn Railway lovely logo that is so we're getting a nice good selection of locos on the fleet now got the class 50 52 Western 37 just on the other side of the of the Western 47 there with DCC sounds 153 in first crack Western blue purple but yeah the two new locos are running in quite nicely and quite happily now on this bend here I've used 0.5 millimeter uh, black cards cut it into strips and if I slow the 47 down quite a bit you can see now that I've got the as you can see from the 158 moving over I've got what they call the cant um, C-A-N-T I believe that's how you uh, spell it um, where obviously the train will normally you know adjust round the curve um, some people call it Super elevation, that's the word, elevation. Um, not too sure if it's coming out all right on camera, um, but what I've done is I've just used one piece there, then the next one went up to one mil, so two pieces of 0.5 to equals one mil, and then right in the middle of the curve it goes up to 1.5 mil, and then as it goes back around the curve it goes down to one mil, and then 0.5 mil. Um, I might take the three bits out in the middle and put it back to two because um, it does seem a bit, if you watch, it's a bit hairy scary. Um, but it's something that I'm trying. I've tried on this layout to do something different, a bit, bit more realism. That's um, what it looks like when the 47 comes around. Uh, don't look too bad, but yeah, I'll put some super elevation onto one of my curves Hope you've enjoyed this video guys and hope that you enjoyed seeing all the items that I've recently purchased today for the railway um, Hope that you did was able to see the super elevation on that bank curve um, It's just something that I'm trying if it doesn't work out then I'll just take the card out put the track back down on the on the board and it'll be fine as it is um, but I'm trying for a bit more realism with this railway. If you have enjoyed this video guys, please as always smash that like button down on the left hand side. If you've got any questions or comments about this video or any of the items that you've seen in the video today, please leave any questions or comments down below. If you are a subscriber of mine, great big thumbs up. Thank you for staying with me throughout all of this time. And if you've just joined this channel recently, welcome to the channel. Hope that you enjoy the content so far and I hope that you enjoy future content in the future. If you want to become a subscriber, you know how it works. Just click on that subscribe button down on the right hand side. Click on the little bell icon, select on all, and you get notified of all my videos I publish in the future. 
As also, I also have a super thanks button active down below. If you would like to donate to the channel, then please hit the super thanks button and donate whatever little you can to the channel. Be much appreciate, and you will help me build this railway from a plain baseboard up to a scenic model railway. Uh, if you want to carry on watching videos from my channel, there should be a link coming up here and here. But until the next time, guys, take care of yourself, look after your loved ones, but above all, happy modelling, and bye-bye from Charlesburg Junction. Thank you.